If Ikaruga is a shooter for veterans of shooters looking for a challenge, then Tyrion targets the opposite audience. The game was published by Epic Mega Games in 1995, and yes, that was how Epic Games used to be called back then. Then the game received an updated version called Tyrion 2000 in 1999. Then the creator released a source code to the public, making the game completely free and open source in 2004. You can just search for Open Tyrant and download it for free to run on any modern operating systems like I did. This is running on my Windows 10 PC. There is a version of GOG that is also free, but don't get that version. That runs on DOSBox and is way clunkier to configure. The appeal of this criminally overlooked vertical shooter lies beyond its surface. The game features a shield and armor mechanic that prevents enemy fire from instantly killing you like the usual for the genre. As long as you watch out for your shield gauge and make sure not to deplete it completely, you can keep going. Once it's empty, you lose armor, which is your actual HP equivalent. Armor get depleted very fast, but the game has a mercy system on top of that, where it might randomly send you a cargo for you to blow up and restore some of the armor. Never to its full capacity though. Your shield will regenerate over time if you cut back on your rapid fire. How quickly it regenerates depends on your ship's generator, which you can upgrade if you're playing on story mode. That's right, story mode. This game has three different modes of play. Well, four, but the fourth one I was never able to unlock. Story mode is definitely the best for beginners, because it gives you access to a menu between levels where you can spend money to change and upgrade ship parts or change ships entirely. Because in Tyrion Dying sends you back to the pre-stage menu, you don't actually lose the upgrade, so part of the strategy for beating a level you might be stuck on is experimenting with a different loadout of ship gear. And speaking as someone who hates the power-up reset mechanic from traditional shooters, it feels great to be allowed to simply bask in that feeling of becoming more and more of an unstoppable machine with no fear the game will punish your lack of skills by making itself even harder to beat. I never understood that. Don't think this means Tarion has no challenge though. For one, position is too crucial. Not having to worry about losing upgrades means you as a novice can focus completely on just that. And the shield mechanic I mentioned isn't going to save you from being crushed to death in one or two seconds if a large ship or object collide with you, so you still need to learn patterns or memorize the more difficult parts of a stage. The game also features six difficulty modes. Easy and normal are totally doable by a novice, hard not so much. And the other three modes, which have to be unlocked through special battle combinations for whatever reason, are meant for experienced space ship shooter fans. Story mode does in fact come with a lot of, mostly optional, text and lore dump, the majority of which you can read by collecting data cubes hidden in levels. Some of those are a lot of confusing nonsense that makes it hard to grasp the full context of what the heck is going on with the protagonist, but some is genuinely interesting and even funny. There are some branching paths for you to choose and hidden bonus levels that have some unique twists to them, including a few throwbacks to Space Invader clones and other early shooters. It's honestly shocking how much content the story mode has across its four episodes, and a rather emotional twist at the end if you bother reading the text. Arcade mode lets you skip all the story and focus on beating levels in a more traditional arcade shooter fashion. It also strips the game off the workshop instead of throwing the parts and weapons at you in form of collectible power-ups. And still, you don't lose them when dying, you still get sent back to the prep menu to try again, which sort of defeats the point of being in arcade mode, well, go figure, it's still straightforward enough. Lastly, you have the two-player mode, which comes with a unique mechanic of combining the two ships into one, where both players can still shoot, but one shoots ahead and controls the ship's positioning, while the other can aim at any direction around it when shooting. A feature that I couldn't make much use of is called Twiddle. It sounds like candy, but it's actually a mechanic that involves doing directional combinations to use a special move depending on what model of ship you're piloting. Just like a special move in a fighting game. Since positioning is important in a game like this, I found it a little hard to test. Still, very neat. Never seen another shooter do this. The main problems with Tyrant are in some of its level design. Difficulty progression is basically non-existent. Ignoring ship upgrades, the levels themselves are easier or harder regardless of how early or late they are in the game. Sometimes the game will also rehash samey looking levels if they happen to take place in a plan that you're revisiting, which is a tad disappointing. I really think the pros up with the cons with this game. Of all the shooters I've played, which admittedly are probably not that many, this is one I think anyone should at least try for half an hour or so. There is a lot of meat here and quite a few features that you don't see in just any shooting up. 
The Sheep Workshop adds a layer of player experimentation, the Yuta Cubes add quite a bit of road building and really the game just looks and controls fine, with many options like gamepads, keyboard, mouse or a combination of the three. The music might not please everyone, but who cares? A few levels later you're just gonna be hearing a lot of delicious explosion sounds while you shower enemies in firepower, almost like you're playing a vampire survivor's clone. The game is freaking free with no strings attached. Go play Opentarian! It's in total nearly 4 hours of playtime from start to finish with the option of saving and quitting. I don't care how good or bad you are at shooters, just do it, dang it! Special thanks and shout out to the content creator and game developer Chris from Ancient DOS Games for making me aware this gem exists. Go check out his channel if you have any past interest in old DOS classics or Commodore 64 stuff. Thanks for watching and take care!